let's take a look at 4.2, question one. It says you have a second order linear, homogeneous differential equation. And it says, hey, y1 or the first solution is given to us is y1 equals to e to 2x. And it says, hey, use the method of reduction of order to find y2. So before going over this method, let us remember that in 4.3, we learned about auxiliary equation. In auxiliary equation, we form the quadratic equation m squared minus 4m plus 4 equal to 0, which is m minus 2 squared equal to 0, m is 2. We have a repeated solution. This is our second case. It says the general solution for that differential equation can be written as c1, e2, 2x plus c2, x, e2, 2x. So we already know that y2 is equal to x, e2, 2x. We can use this to double check that our final answer is correct or not. So this is what we learned in 4.3. So keep that in mind. You can use it as the final checkpoint to make sure that you get a correct y2. First of all, remember that when you are dealing with these types of questions, y1 is e to 2x. y2 divided by y1 is a function. This is not a constant. So y2 can be written as e to 2x ux. Well, since this is a solution for this differential equation, we need to take the first derivative, take the second derivative, and plug that in. So the first derivative is equal to 2 e to 2x u of x plus e to 2x u prime of x. And the second derivative becomes, well, here you have 4 e to 2x ux plus 2 e to 2x u prime of x. I'm going to erase this part of the board. I'm going to just write down this guy here using the auxiliary um, equation that y2 must be x e to 2x. Keep that in mind. Use it as a checkpoint. Plus, now taking the derivative of this guy, applying the product rule, you get 2 e to 2x u prime of x plus e to 2x times the second derivative of u. Now we just need to substitute this into the differential equation that we have the first derivative and the second derivative. And so let's substitute everything into the differential equation that we have. So the second derivative or e to 2x u of x plus if you combine these two, you get 4 e to 2x u prime of x plus e to 2x u double prime of x minus 4 parentheses. The derivative is 2 e to 2x u of x plus e to 2x u prime of x. And you have plus 4 y, which is e to 2x u x. On the right hand side, we have the 0. So let us distribute negative 4 into parentheses. Here we have these 2 that becomes 8 e to 2x ux. Then we have 4 e to 2x u prime of x. Here we have e to 2x u double prime of um, x minus 8 e to 2x ux minus 4 e to 2x u prime of x, which is equal to 0. So what do we have here? We have 8 e to 2x ux, negative 8 e to 2x ux. Here you can also cancel out 4 e to 2x u prime and 4 e to 2x u prime. What's left? e to 2x u double prime of x equal to 0. Very well. Here you can use. We 
these two are equal to zero, but e to the power 2x is never zero. So what's we left? We left the double prime of the second derivative of u at x equal to zero. Let's use a simple substitution and take w to be u prime. So w prime is the second derivative of u. What do we get? We get w prime at x equal to zero. So w of x becomes just c sub one, for example. But w is u prime. So u prime at x is c sub one, or u of x becomes c sub one x plus c sub two. Let c sub two be zero and c sub one be just one. So u of x becomes just x. Well, so now that we found u, what's the meaning of that for y2? y2 is e to 2x times x. So we're going back here. y2 of x becomes x e to 2x. We found the second solution.